everyone, this is Darren in another episode of Total Voiced TV. Um, so today I'm at, in Edinburgh with Monique and we're here at a Hi. Teacher's Voice Conference. And um, I wanted to talk about the gospel sound a lot because um, in Australia where we work, everyone is after this R&B, soulful gospel kind of sound, but I'm also conscious that we we're very far from the tradition. Um, and so we may not always have the best teaching about how to get that sound, how to get the cut and edge and the quality into our voice. So I thought I'd ask an expert about this. And so here's Monique Thomas from France, um, and she sings gospel, soul, blues, um, R&B, like you wouldn't believe. So um, I thought I might ask her to um, unravel some of the mystery of that. So thank you so much for being here, Monique. Thank you for having me, Darren. And um, could you just tell us a little bit about what you do as a singer? Well, first, I'd like to say that um, it's important to have a good technique that allows you to have an even voice. So you're getting the same voice quality from the bottom of your voice all the way through the top, um, the same power mm -hmm. and the same effortlessness. Mm -hmm. all the way through and even that your vibrato is functioning all the way through the voice yeah. uh, a lot of times people go into more um, let's say in your face kind of aggressive styles uh, before their voice is fully balanced and this requires a bit more uh, advanced technique yeah because we're singing at louder vo volumes often and often in very diverse ranges so gospel music is very rangy yeah. So you might be singing from the very low end of your voice to the very top, and it doesn't really matter what tessiture you are. If mm -hmm. you study different uh, gospel singers, the sopranos, the mezzos, and the altos, uh, there's some altos that really get up there, yeah. and they get up there with a very strong voice. <laughs> things is important is that you develop the voice it's just like in opera you're not gonna sing uh, Verdi and Puccini in the beginning of your career some of the stuff you you shouldn't be singing it so it might be to start that you might sing the gospel in a lighter style mm -hmm. now that doesn't mean you can't do the right phrasing and yeah. phrasing you're gonna get from learning and listening to great gospel singers which there are many mm -hmm. and as your voice develops and your ability to coordinate becomes a little bit uh, better then you can start leaning into your voice a little bit But here's the the thing is you want to make sure that when you start leaning into your voice and going for a little bit more power That you don't lose all the balance in your voice So that's something that I think that's important that you have to start where you are develop your voice Yeah, yeah, I feel so many times when the Aussies try to sing gospel they confuse gospel style for loud singing Yeah would you say that's a mistake? It's a mistake that a lot of people make uh, because they're going for volume. And it's not always volume, it's also intensity. Because again, if you listen to different types of gospel singers, if you take somebody like Smokey Norfolk, for example, that's a lighter instrument. Mm -hmm. But when he lays into his voice, there's a, there's a power in there. I need you now. types even the lightest of lightest of instruments if it's used correctly it can be very powerful but you've got to know what's appropriate for your instrument and it's hard to do by yourself you really need a teacher for that yeah so how would someone get that kind of power into their voice because that's what someone all my singers want more 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 power more this more presence more sure. you know and well the power comes from the balance well there, there are two things first of all let's just talk about the technical standpoint um, the power is going to be uh, about 
uh, this is a concept. I don't know if how much you're working on technique with them if they understand depth of chord. Mm -hmm. Is that something we can talk about? Yeah, I think so. Why okay, not? so your chords can come together if we're just being like in a shallow way, just the very top. Oh, my nails are caramel. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we can get the top just coming together. We can get a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. And so in gospel, we're not going to go all the way down here because that would be, and we don't want to do that. But gospel tends to go to the edge and they would get the chords together all the way down here. And then we're going to keep it uh, through, through the voice, at least through two bridges uh, for, for men and women. Mm -hmm. And so that's what makes the difference in the sound rather when we're having something that, that's going to be lighter. So that's from a technical standpoint. But the other thing that's going to be very important are keys. Okay. The keys of the song. So let's take my voice for instance. I'm a lighter soprano. I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm a coloratura. Mm -hmm. um, and so my voice really opens up above like C sharp four, C sharp five, D, E flat. When you get me to an E flat E, yeah, you get me there, my voice opens up. And so mm -hmm. because I know that, I make sure that my um, my important notes or my money notes, as we like to call them, because because I'm American, right? Yeah. Those notes are up there. Yeah. So I'm gonna make sure that I key so that things are up there. Um, even though I'm a lighter instrument, I have a tendency to well, I, I'm able to get quite low in my voice, which is sometimes a bit rare for the for the lighter instruments. But I can get down there, but I don't stay down there because I cannot sustain that tessiture. So it's yeah. kind of knowing what your instrument was built to do and respecting that. If you're the kind of instrument that has that low and that can really sustain low, you're probably a heavier instrument, yeah. you're, you're more of a dramatic instrument, then you can do that and your voice will ring over the musicians that you're playing with. But when you're an instrument like mine, you've got to stay out of the mid, especially for climax notes, because nobody will hear you. Mm -hmm. And you'll tire yourself out trying to do that. So mm -hmm. that's really, really important. Keys are extremely important. Mm -hmm. Would you have any exercise that you would share with us that you think is most helpful in developing the gospel sound in your voice? It may not seem like it right away, mm -hmm. but I find it's a very fast exercise to not only get the chord, the depth of chord engaged, and mm -hmm. at the same time make sure that the larynx is not raising. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times, a lot of times we'll do the nays and nas to get this sort of edgy sound but the only problem with this edgy sound you probably know is it's quite thin yeah so it's it's quite thin and it can be annoying and it's really not a finished sound yeah. so i like this exercise um it's what we call a dopey sound so it's kind of like you're an idiot you mm -hmm. know and but you do it in a way that's not so airy you do it kind of in a firm way so i'll do it on my voice and hopefully we've been talking all week so my voice is a bit tired but i would say like for instance rather than see a lot of times we'll do that which yeah. sort of takes the pressure off the voice but then we've got not enough of anything to work with we're not getting a sound so this gets the larynx down but it also enables us to then get more depth of chord mm -hmm. so i can go from you see how I brought more chord yeah. into play? Yeah, that's really good. And I find that that's kind of a faster way mm -hmm. to, to get things working. And then I might go back and forth. I might do some of the nasty sounds just to get my chords to stretch out a bit, mm -hmm. you know, stretch out so I can get higher. Mm -hmm. But I find that I can go through most of my range with and I'll skip up. I can pretty much pull it off. That's brilliant. Yeah, and so yeah. that really, really made a difference and, in my voice. And how can we be sure we're doing that exercise correctly? Like, what do we need to remember when we're doing that? Well, always keep everything the same volume. Don't get louder as you do the exercises. Be okay. a robot. Um, mm -hmm. Don't don't go for volume. Yeah. Go for. I would. I tend to go for a mid volume, like somewhere in the middle. Not too quiet. Not too loud. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in the middle where you're just engaged enough. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a vibrato, it's great to pull the vibrato in because you can't use a vibrato and be heavy. 
Yeah. A, a spinning vibrato is not heavy, so mm -hmm. those are some tips that I would give. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's so good. Now, um, how can people who are watching Total Voice TV today connect with you if they want to know more? Well, if they want to know more, um, I have several ways. If they want to hear me sing, they can go to my music website, which is www.moniquethomasmusic.com. So Monique, M-O-N-I-Q-U-E-T-H-O-M-A-S, yeah. music, M U. SIC.com and then my teaching website is www.vocalartstudio. But you're in France. If people are not in France, is it still possible oh, to take some yes. lessons? Oh, yes. They can Skype me. Okay. They can send a, a, a homing pigeon. <laughs> they can send me emails. Yeah. I, I do a lot of work by Skype. I have days where I don't see anybody in person, wow. <laughs> which is kind of funny. That's brilliant. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, there Thanks you are, folks. The Mysteries of the Gospel Sound Unlocked. Hope you have a nice day and sing well. Bye. Bye.